You know what I haven't had in a long, long time? Was a Google Pop. You Google Pop? They were like yogurts, but they can't. They were yogurts, but they came in like pops that you would put in the freezer for like an hour or two. You get them out, <sniffs> taste so freaking good. You know what I'm talking about. You know you remember Google Pops. Come on. Okay, well that's neither here nor there. What's up? My name is JT, and welcome to the Paradise Podcast. I still got to work on my intro, but thank you so much for tuning in to the Paradise Podcast, People's Paradise. Always pleasure just to know that you're tuning in and listening to me, you know. Always feels good to know I got an audience out there who really do mess with your boy and really do understand that time is now. I'm joking. But what's been going on with you? What's been going on in your life? Me, personally, I've been just fine. I've just been here, you know, just working on the podcast as always. Writing as always, voiceover as always. Um, I'm thinking about going to this little club in downtown to go do stand up comedy there, but I still got to focus on marketing this podcast and getting them, you know, the public appeal out there. Also, um, you know, it's that time of the year, man. I told you before, I'm thinking about moving and I'm actually thinking about buying a lease on this apartment in. The city next to me, I wanted this bad apartment. It's beautiful. It will be the expensive apartment I've ever paid money for until today. But I think it'll be cold. It is. When I tell you it's beautiful, it's like God's paradise in person. Like, it is the most beautiful place I've ever seen in my life. I, but, um, besides going on in my life, I'm going to talk about what's going on in the world today. Um, we got two things we're talking about now. First, we're going to talk about Suicide Squad. Shout out to Marvel fan. Shout out to my uh, DC Cooks fan. If you mess with the cops, you know that's what's up. You know, personally to me, I've always been a DC Comics guy. I've always been a DC Comics guy, but as I've gotten older, I've had started to have a little bit more respect and more admiration for Marvel. But I guess it's just because, you know, I talked about this other podcast a few months ago, but you may not have ever heard of it. Um, I think that when you compare Marvel and DC, I think DC Comics makes better powers and better characters, but I think that Marvel makes better plots, makes better makes more plots and makes better drama. That's what I'm trying to say. Marvel makes better dramatic plots. DC Comics makes better, cooler characters. And I think that's why the movie I'm about to talk about right now, Suicide Squad, did so bad on Rotten Tomatoes that a whole group of people who have nothing else to do with their life besides protests decided to get a petition to have Rotten Tomatoes shut down. So let's talk about it. So, Ron Tomatoes came out. I mean, Suicide Squad came out. You know, shout out to my boy Will Smith who's in it. You know, I love Will Smith and following Will Smith since since before Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, since God knows when. I feel like every black person is born with the knowledge of, with the innate knowledge of who Will Smith is, who Justin Timberlake is, and who Michael Jackson is. Um, The movie came out. It's had a few mixed reviews. In fact, I'm on Twitter right now reading some of them. Um, and, you know, it's kind of it's kind of choppy on how people see it, how people feel about the movie right now. And on IMDb, if you Google Suicide Squad right now, on IMDb, the movie got 8.4 out of 10. But on Rotten Tomatoes, the movie got 33%. And um, I haven't seen it yet. So I'm just going by what people have said about the movie. So far as I'm on Twitter right now, there's not that many people who have seen it. So much as a lot of people are saying that they can't wait to see it. I'm thinking about going to get to it before an absolute review on it. But I will say this. Judging, judging on the trailer, it looked like the movie is going to suck. I'm just going to be all the way honest with you. When I saw the trailer, I, automatic, I saw the trailer last year and I automatically thought this movie is going to suck. I promise you, that's what I felt like. I felt like when I was watching it, I was like, this movie, like, you can tell when somebody rushed, put a movie together and really didn't think it through. You can just tell. You know, I felt that same way about um, Batman versus Superman. I felt that same way about Green, not if that same way about Green Lantern, but nevertheless, that sucked too. And you can look at those movies and say, like, you can tell that something's not put right together. Something's not going well. And I look at this movie and think it's probably going to be like that. But I'm not going to be judgmental. 
I'm going to go there. I'm going to be objective about my opinion. I'm going to go there, watch the movie, give my absolute review, maybe. And then I will have do a podcast about it tomorrow. I'm still deciding if I should go or not. You think I should go? I don't know. You're the person who's listening to the podcast. You have to tell me. You know, you got to tell me if I should do it or not. You know, at the end of the day, I want to, I you know, I thought about taking some days on this podcast and making it like a review, some episodes like a review, but like a movie review that I went to go see or something like that. But I kind of have my other two podcasts for that, The Secret to Good Anime and The Good Read. So I don't want to bore you with um, movie reviews all the time. But anyway, so um, the reason I want to talk about it is because, of course, the people who made the petition, that's how I wanted to get to. Um, I was going to read some tweets about the movie reviews right now. I don't see any on Twitter. Most, for like the first two minutes of scrolling, it's just a bunch of white dudes with Batman shirts saying, I can't wait to see the effing movie! So I'm just scrolling through right now. But, my opinion about starting a petition, you know, it is what it is. I don't get why you would start a petition. I don't get why you would start a petition to get somebody's opinion of how good a movie is. I hate that. Like, I hate when people try to attack your freedom of speech if it's not harming another person. It's not harming me to tell you that I saw Jungle Book and, in my opinion, I don't think it was that good of a movie. I'm just being all the way honest with you. It's, and I, I really, now that's true. I really didn't think Jungle Book was all that good of a movie. I thought Zootopia was good, but I don't think it was all that. I think it's even Zootopia, I think Zootopia got a lot of love because it was just, you know, colorful. But that's the end of there. So I don't think they should, more stories. I don't think they should make a, um, for Suicide Squad, the people who are starting a protest and trying to get a petition to get Rotten Tomatoes. First off, that's not going to work. That's not going to work. Do you know how many petitions exist right now or are being formed today to get TMZ off the internet? Dude, do you even know? Then trust me, you're not going to get Rotten Tomatoes off. You are not going to get Rotten Tomatoes off. You might get BT.com off, but you're never going to get Rotten Tomatoes off. Now, I'm like I said, I might go see the movie tonight, and I'm going to go and I might see it and get my opinion about it. And like I said before, if it sucks, I will let you know. If it's good, I will also let you know. But I really do, and honest, and and all, try not to be a try not to be opinionated. I really do. I am going to be opinionated. I really do feel that this movie is going to suck. Like in my all heart of hearts, I do feel like this movie is going to suck. But it is what it is, you know. We'll see. Um, shout out to Will Smith for getting that role. Um, I think the Joker looks. I think the Joker looks pretty cool. I know there's a lot of like there was one thing talking about the top thing on Twitter when I went on Twitter to see, talk to talk to see the reviews about the movie was. About how the woman who's playing Marley Quinn, Margaret Gold, I don't know how to pronounce her name correctly. About how her shorts were too short and everything like that. But, you know, it is what it is. I don't see why that's a trending topic. Um, next thing we're going to get into in the hair, let's leave that alone. We're going to talk about what's going on with Iran. Or the, the deal that supposedly happened with Iran. So, apparent, um, in January 2016... Five U.S. citizens were released from Iran. Five U.S. American hostages released from Iran. And the Wall Street Journal recently recently released a report saying that there was a $400 million exchange or payment, sorry, payment to Iran. And they're suspecting that it might be because of the hostages being released. And, you know, as of course... I don't personally, I don't know, I'm going to be honest with you, I'm being all the way objective. I don't see why, I don't see why that would cause that much of an uproar on social media. I don't see why it is actually because, you know, I just don't, I don't see the relevance of it. I'm going to be real with you. But people nevertheless are taking this time to attack the Obama administration. People are taking this, uh, taking this as an opportunity to attack Hillary Clinton because they said that she was the one who initiated the talks between the United States and Iran. And... From what I've read online, from the information that I could gather on the situation, what I have read is that there was the five hostages that were released from Iran were in exchange for a couple of other Iranian hostages that we had already had. 
And because of sanctions being released on, um, not Border Patrol, but it was some sanctions, I can't remember the exact name, because of sanctions being released, there was an equal exchange of the two. And there was a, when I also read online, there was a 1.7 billion payment from the Obama administration to Tehran from a situation that happened in 1979 because of arms deal or something like that. Now, that I want to speak on primarily because I don't see why, if this is the Obama administration, not the 1979, whoever was in power then, I don't see why they have to wait 37 plus years to pay that much money. I don't know what that what was up with that. But that's neither here nor there. I don't see, I think sometimes we got to really wonder. I'll be real with you, I don't know. Like they're saying, you know, did he did they really just pay four hundred million dollars to exchange hostages and it was a ransom? I don't know. Honestly, I rather I would rather if worse come to worse, if this is a real story, I honestly hope they did. Because I would rather know I would rather sleep at night well knowing that Mark I, I'm under a government who would pay four hundred million dollars for just five people. Because I'll tell you right now, Donald Trump isn't gonna pay two or three dollars for sixty thousand people. I'm just telling you the truth. So I respect somebody who's good willing to give them money for their people. I respect that. Now, that being said, America got we gotta know when we gotta know what to be nosy about. We gotta stop being nosy about stuff that really is so insignificant. Like why this happened granted, this story happened seven months ago. It's just now popping up into relevancy now. Why do you really care? You know, I don't. In some situations, you gotta really be like, bro, that that don't really matter. This don't really make any sense. Why are we talking about this? This ain't even all that. I really feel like that about this situation. I don't know. I want you to. I want you to tell me your opinion. I want you to tell me what do you think about it. Because as always, like I always say, your opinion matters more than anybody else, and I always want to hear what the people have to say. I always want to hear. What's going on, going on in your mind? What's going on? How you feel about certain situations? So, you know, just have the conversation with me and let me know. And with that being said as well, um, I guess that's it for the hell. Didn't have that much time to prepare. And plus, they have, they have all these dramatic, tragic stories going on today. I just really didn't have that much time to prepare all that good of his stuff. But we're going to go ahead and get into the daily discussions. Um, first daily discussion topic that I have for you, you know, I wanted to talk to you about is your genius. And this was something that really fascinated. This has always been a topic that really fascinates me. Finding, finding the greatness in a person, finding a person's power, finding the thing that they do better than anybody else, finding the, the, the area of the world, the area in their mind where they have absolute hold and control and nobody can compare to. So in all of our cultures, you know, whether you're of American cultural descent, whether you're, you grew up in, with Canadian culture, whether you grew up with Venezuelan culture, whether you grew up in Barbados, whether you grew up in Britain, regardless, whatever, anywhere, there's always been a, uh, there's always been a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? There's always been a certain respect that we have for people who display high intellect. There's always been a certain respect we have for people who display a high intellect. And there's always been a certain amount of awe and wonder about how we give people who are, for example, intelligent at math, who are intelligent at science, who are intelligent at this, intelligent at that. And we always treat it like those are th- we always treat it like those are things that we just can't. They're there. We always treat it like those are levels of intellect that we just cannot achieve, and they're just impossible to get to. And you know, growing up as a kid, I was always known as like the smart kid in class. I was a, I was always known as like the really really smart kid, like the nerdy black kid. And I'm, I've gotten to age for what I've seen with intelligence when it comes to people. I think we get so focused on looking at what we think the archetype of intelligence is that we don't see the other intelligence that other people possess. Like we always, like Albert Einstein, for example, was a genius at mathematics, genius at mathematics, genius with space, time, theories, and everything. But a lot of people don't know that 
Albert Einstein was illiterate he, for the first half of his life. He had a hard time reading. He, he was dyslexic. So there are different types of intelligences. And there's a quote or going around the internet that they say, some people say that he said it. I personally don't know. I just know sometimes it says Albert Einstein said it. Sometimes it says Anonymous said it. And the quote is, everybody is a genius. But if you criticize a fish for not being able to climb a tree, it's going to spend its whole life thinking it's stupid. And I think that same concept applies to finding your gift. And I think that same concept concept applies to finding your intelligence. I feel like... I feel like sometimes... I feel like sometimes when you get into certain situations where... I, get, I feel like sometimes you get into certain situations where you feel like... Um, like you see somebody who's smarter than you in one area and you feel so insecure... But then at the same time, you're not acknowledging the fact that you're probably intelligent in another area that that other person can't be intelligent in. You know, it just it is what it is. Personally, you know, and I can be honest with you and tell you, you know, I have that problem. Because a lot of times when I first started getting into talking to people and having communications a lot, I would always feel awkward because a lot of people would tell me sometimes I'm awkward at doing this, I'm awkward at doing this, or... I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to do that. Or I, I say this at the wrong time. Or I say this at the wrong time. Or I have no social skills. Or I'm just, I have no common sense. A lot of people said that. And, you know, it is what it is, you know. But at the same time, I also had to wonder, is this really what my intelligence is at? Or maybe it's not. So, I, was, I did this episode. And I kind of am getting a little bit personal because I started thinking about it more. I really am wondering... Do you have an air? Do you know where your element is when it comes to your intelligence? Do you know where your element is? Do you know where the area of intelligence where you operate and you do the absolute best at? And intelligence can be anything. It can be you knowing how to cook good. It can be you knowing how to um how to how cut grass good. It can be you knowing how to market and talk to people better. It can be you being a person who's the best organizer. Everybody I feel like has an area where they probably were very passionate about and they do the absolute best in because that was the area where they most operate at. That's the area where they have the most passion in. Like my area, honestly, is communication. The area of intelligence where I've always had the greatest intellect that was in intelligent was in communicating with people because I always could think of I always could think of the most innovative ways, innovative little anecdotes or ways to start a conversation with somebody and make it seem normal. Whether it be us talking about movies, whether it be us talking about I could send the line with somebody and for I could send the line with somebody to seven eleven and end up being their best friend by the by by the time they get to the front. So I was wondering about that because I feel like for you to be really good in your career for you to do a job and you'd be really good at it, I feel like you have to be almost a genius at it. That's to be something you have to really like, you have to really hold, hold the, the cojones in that area. And I wonder about that sometimes what I'm doing, because as always, you know, you have those moments where you'll criticize yourself and think, you know what? Maybe I'm not good at this. Maybe I'm not as good at this as I think I am. Maybe I'm just kind of, all right, maybe I'm not this, maybe I'm not that. But, then you'll have moments where you do really good and you're like, man, I'm really digressed. So sometimes it can be a self-confidence thing. Sometimes it can be a not knowing what you're supposed to. Sometimes it can be a lot of different factors, you know. You know, I come on this microphone and be as cocky and happy, as confident as ever. But there's a lot of times where I'm scared and wondering, do I really deserve the success that my brain and my soul, my intuition tell me that I do? You know, and you know, it is what it is. What do you think about it? What do you think about that? I'm trying to think of some people who are geniuses that you might know in their area. I'll give you a prime example. Paul Mooney, Dave Chappelle, Chris Rock. Those are three comedic geniuses. In the art of making comedy, those are comedic geniuses. In my mind, those are comedic geniuses. In the art of creating comedy, creating a sensation of making somebody laugh, seeing what can make somebody laugh that they're creative geniuses. Michael Jordan in the art of playing basketball is a creative genius. 
Martin Luther King in the art of oratory is a creative genius. J.K. Rowling in the art of creating a world and art of creating fantasy and fiction is a creative genius. And I've, I've always said that in those areas, I, it's just amazing to me. You know, everybody has a little creative genius in you, but then it, and it doesn't have to be so esoteric. It doesn't have to be so esoteric. I know people who are plumbers who probably in their area are creative geniuses. You know, that's why you go to school for it. That's where you can pick up a trade for you. I think that, I think that, you know what I'm going to tell you what the problem with colleges nowadays is now nine times out of 10, when you go to college, you'll get a, a degree in a trade that you won't work in. There used to be a time when you would get a degree in a trade and you would automatically have a, have a, a job in that area. But my thing was for you to go to college, the whole purpose of you going to college was to be able to get an apprenticeship in an area that you were going to work in and become a genius in. And I think nowadays, because we become so attached to the money making aspect of the world, I think a lot of people have forgotten. I think a lot of people have lost that passion and love of going to school to absolutely learn to be a genius in the area that they wanted to work in. And. You know, what is what it is, you know, I, I, I think personally, I think I think personally, you should you should take some time to get to know yourself a little bit better. You should take some time to be able to understand the areas that you do the best in, because we live in a world nowadays where you're just going. Most people are just going day through day, day, day to day, day to day, day to day, day, not living, you know, go to work, go home, have sex with your wife. If you have a wife. Go watch the game for a while and go to work. It's like a robotic existence with very with very little variations. You know that well, the reason I do this podcast is because I want to, I want to have the existence where I'm going to my home, enjoying my life, doing this podcast, talking to millions of people across the world, enjoying myself, and then then going out and enjoying my people, then going out playing, then going to Haiti, then going to Brazil, then going to Canada, then going to Mexico, then going to, um, hell, Donnie Terrio's house, going to anywhere in the world. And I feel like that's existence to me. Existence to me is just exist. Pure, happy existence to me is just going through your life every single day, enjoying it, enjoying what, enjoying what God is giving you, enjoying the, enjoying the the passion and tasting the fruit that God has waiting for you, and I feel like it should be that way for you. So, I don't know what your genius is. I don't know what your genius is because you haven't taken the time to tell me. You haven't taken the time to tell me which area that you operate the best in. I have a friend. I have a cousin. His name is I'm not going to say his name. His genius is in playing video games. Very good at playing video games, but at the same time. He's not good at talking to people, but that's because his genius is in video games. His genius is in that area. It's so fixated in that area that he's a genius at it. And I've told him a thousand times, there are people who make money from playing video games. There are people who are making millions and millions of dollars from playing video games. That can be you if you just take the time to focus in that area. And of course, he doesn't listen to me, but it is what it is. You know, Denzel Washington is a great, is great because he's a genius at being an actor. And I think that's one. There's a book I, I want you to read if you ever take the time. It was called Mastery by Robert Greene. And in Mastery, he talks about how you become, how people become masters in certain fields, how people would develop a passion in this certain area, and how they go through an apprenticeship, and how they go through practice, and how they do this and do that to it, how they learn certain skills and attachments to the to the area and sometimes it can be a passion sometimes it can be a gift but sometimes it can be a passion sometimes it can be a gift and what i mean by that is not every time you just not every time when you pursue an area that you feel the most passionate about and i've had to learn this myself are you going to be the absolute most talented in it i'll tell you from experience honest to god truth when i first started when i first started really Really trying to better myself and communicating with people with being able to establish relationships with people easily. I really probably didn't show that much promise in it. The only area I really show, I think I really showed a lot of promises is because when I talk to people naturally, I have the ability to. I have the natural ability to relate to people on an intellectual level, regardless of any background. So I've always used to, even when I got to a point where I started getting 
even when I got to a point where I got very, very good at what I was saying, I was still dropped back to four or five years ago when I was still kind of shy, but still had that ability. So when I would use that in my conversations with people, I've always had the ability to naturally to mentally relate, to be able to mentally establish a connection with the person. And it helps even with this podcast. It helps me even talking to you because if I couldn't do it, then you wouldn't be listening to me right now. So a little bit of homework I got for you tonight. Find your genius. You know, take some time to really think about what it is that make you tick. Take some time to really think about what it is that makes you special. What it is that makes you unique. What it is that makes you great. What it is that people always hear that you're great at. And I'm going to tell you right now from personal experience. It's not always going to be something that everybody's going to tell you you're good at. I'm just going to be all the way honest with you. It's not going to be something sometimes. It's never going to. There's not one person in this world who has a gift or a talent that at least four or five people have to tell them that they're terrible at. I can tell you four or five people that have told me I'm terrible at talking. I can then I can tell you at least 30 plus people who have told me that I'm great at it and I'm amazing at it and I'm this God at it and I'm this and that at it. At a certain point, you have to really just follow your intuition. You have to follow your inner knowledge and be able to have confidence with yourself and say, hey, I'm establishing who I am. You are establishing who you are through your own, through identifying with your own gift. And there's something that Steve Harvey has said a long time ago. You know, Steve Harvey always does. Steve Harvey always does these, um, these seminars where he talks about finding your gift and finding your passion. And he said, finding the thing that you do the do the absolute best with the least amount of effort. And he said, you know, he said the talent, he said the talent is never the gift. And it's the thing. It's always something that you're really great at. Now I'm going to be all the way honest with you. Like I said before, sometimes the area where you have the potential to be potential does not always signific- signif- signify talent. Initially, potential can signify, sometimes can signify you becoming great at something, but it never always generally can be talent. Sometimes it can be a potential that can develop past a talent. But when you first discover it, when you first discover a passion, what I'm trying to say is when you first discover a passion, sometimes you're not going to be very talented at it. You might have the potential and then you can go past the level of talent to the level of mastery. But a lot of the time you're not going to be as talented as you thought. But you're not as going to be as talented as you're not going to be as talented as you're not going to be as talented at it as some other people that you might compare yourself to. But at the same time, man, you practice makes perfect. You know, practice makes perfect. I've been doing this broadcasting. I've done at least fifty eight plus hours of audio in the last two months. Practice makes perfect, regardless of how much you do, regardless of. How much criticism you, criticism you get, regardless of how insecure you feel about it, practice makes perfect. And if you take the time to really develop your skills, if you take the time to really develop and practice and really try to be great at what you do, I promise you, you can be great. And with that being said, my name is JT. Um, this episode is going to be called Everybody is a Genius. I think that's going to be the name of this episode. And... Like I said, the homework for this is what I want you to do is after this, really take the time to talk to yourself, talk to your spouse, talk to your people, talk to them about, in your opinion, what makes you a genius? What makes you really smart? What's some area that you're really great in? What's some area of expertise that they always would love to come talk to you about? And you have it. I know you do. Everybody has one, man. Every Everybody has one. But, you know, it is what it is. You have it. You have it, man. It's already there waiting for you. And with that being said, this is JT. This has been the People's Paradise Podcast. As always, it's a pleasure talking to you. It's a pleasure being able to talk to my people. Um, Tomorrow, as always, we're doing this podcast. I decided I'm going to bring back the Good Read Podcast. So I'm going to release an episode for that tomorrow as well. Also, um, also, that's pretty much it. Nothing else. I'm probably going to go see Suicide Squad today, so stay tuned for that. I'm going to give you my opinions about that once I get get done seeing it. And that's pretty much it. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you guys for tuning in. It's always love when I step behind the microphone. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you.